Good morning. Today is the 21st of March and uh, I'm having a test drive today of this 2020 Vauxhall Corsa F 1.2 Turbo SRI. I was very kindly invited to drive this car by uh, Peccador Vauxhall who are in Chandler's Fall which is just north of Southampton. This car has nothing whatsoever actually to do with the previous Corsa, called Corsa E, very confusingly because there's also another Corsa E um, that I'll be doing a video on quite shortly, which is the electric Corsa. It's called a Corsa F because there have been um, now six generations of Corsa. We got the first generation in this country as the Vauxhall Nova, that was also known as the Corsa A, um, in the nations where it was sold as an Opel, places like Spain and France and Germany, etc. So it's actually a smaller car than the previous Corsa, um, the Corsa E and the Corsa D, because they were based on the same uh, chassis, which was shared with the Fiat Grande Punto, although the wheelbase is a lot longer, so there's more space inside. This SRI model costs just for over £20,000, and I've actually got some figures um, for things like PCP finance and leasing to share with you a little bit later. But first of all, let's uh, have a look at the boot. This particular car has got uh, keyless entry and an electronic handbrake. They don't come as standard with that. There we go. I'd say it's about 300 litres or so. I haven't got an exact figure. Should have done my research on that, really. I do apologise. If we lift this up, then we've probably got just a tyre repair kit. Yes, we have, if I can keep that up. Very nice shape, actually. Minimal wheel arch intrusion. Um, boot light there. Unfortunately, there's really not much going on in here. There are some very kind of rough-looking hooks, but it's not an awful lot else to talk about. There's no 12 volt sockets or anything like that. There's no adjustable boot height floor. The height isn't actually that bad. It's sort of standard for this sort of class. It's probably slightly better than an MG3, but you know, um, whether it's better than a Fiesta, I don't really know. Let's shut that now. Excellent. Right, let's just get into the back. It's my handy paperwork for later. Now I'm 5'11 and this is my driving position. Let's just see if I can actually get in for a start. Ooh. It's not looking too great actually. There is a quite an indentation underneath the underneath the seat so that I can get my knees in there, but hmm. I think um I think if you're in any way tall, you're gonna have to look elsewhere. My head's right up against the um the roof. Well, that headroom is not too bad. It's, I, if I wasn't having to shove myself right back in the seat, I'd be okay. Uh, there's no uh, 12 volt socket in the back of here. There's no USB port, anything like that. It's quite dark in here, actually. There's not an awful lot of light, and those those pillars are um, are quite thick. I reckon you need to step up to at least for this SRI model because then you get um, rear parking sensors. You don't get rear parking sensors or a camera um, on the base model, which is VSE at all. So, yes, um, we've got some electric window switches in here, obviously electric rear windows. Um, no more to speak of. There is a bottle holder just there. But, yes, a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of plastic. I mean, the door cards in the front have leather on them. We'll have a look at that later, but these don't. The fabric's okay. It's not my kind of choice, I'd say. Um, it's probably more appropriate, I'd say, in a um, course of VXR. And I don't know if I'll make or be at VXR, but we'll have to see about that. Let's get in the front. Right. Okay. I seem to have chosen a a poor place to uh, stop the car because uh, there seems to be a lot of people going past but never mind right this has got quite a strange handbrake situation in that if you have to disengage the handbrake you don't just press it down like that you actually press the brake pedal i won't demonstrate that now because i don't want to roll down the hill but uh, obviously to start the engine you um put your foot on the 
on the clutch and then you press the start stop button although in a um, more standard SRI you just have a normal key which I would prefer I think got all kinds of things um, sport button uh, button for turning on and off the stop start got button there for um, parking sensors and button for turning off the alarm um, the sport mode, I, I didn't get it to work for some reason, I pressed it but it didn't do anything one thing I'm quite grateful for in this car is the fact that it's got actual heating and ventilation controls which is wonderful <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful this car's based on the same platform as the new Peugeot 208 and the um, DS3 Crossback and those cars don't actually have separate heating and ventilation controls which this car does have so if I switch it on I'm going to take a pause for a second here, viewers, whilst I sort this out. Hold on. Right, that's better. Let's just, just turn off the um, radio. There we go. Let's see if we can get the navigation to come up. Let's pause again. Sorry, viewers. Sorry there, viewers. I think I might have... Uh, missed quite a lot of that whilst I sorted myself out. Um, I've started the engine and that seems to have got rid of this annoying eco mode um, that um, comes on when you, you're, you're stopped in the car and uh, the engine's not running, it turns everything off which I didn't really want because I want to show you things. Start the navigation, that's nice and easy to use. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This car's actually got automatic headlamp dipping which is very nice the music is muted because I don't want to copyright strike of course got proper heating ventilation controls this car um, I don't think it's got dual zone climate control I think it's only single zone but it has got climate control and it's nice and easy to operate the fan speed just like that heated seats on both sides that's very nice I didn't expect that in a car like this I don't really like the colour scheme in here, I, I, it's not really me to be honest, but the average uh, course of bar I'm sure it'll be just fine, it would be more at home in something like a VXR, I think they will be bringing an electric VXR version out. The uh, doors do have leatherette on them like that, it makes them nicer than the ones at the back. Automatic headlamps with a switch that's straight out of a Chevrolet Cruze or an Astra J, which is interesting. I'll just uh, pause the camera here a, se a second while uh, I've looked at these dials, which are um, very nice and clear to read, marked nicely, and of course you've got a separate temperature gauge and a, um, a fuel gauge, which really are a rarity these days to have them so clearly like this. It's a good job, Vauxhall. Right, you can tell this is a PSA group car because the glove box and a right-hand drive car like this one is absolutely tiny. It's because they don't move the fuse box from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. And there's the offending item, and there's the tiny glove box. I don't really know why they do this. I don't know why Pojo Citroen can't be bothered to move it, but that's just the way it is. We've got a centre console here. There's the electronic handbrake. We've got some cup holders storage unit there. On a um, conventional SRI, this is a an optioned up car, you would um, you would have the conventional handbrake here, but of course you've got the electronic handbrake because this is a special spec. All these funny buttons here as well. Don't know what the sport mode does. Um, there's something blanked out there, not sure what it is. And then we've got lane keeping assist turned off, which I probably would do most of the time. Right, apologies to that viewers, I had to move where I was um, actually filming, but what I can do now is show you some figures on this car. Let's look at the PCP figures. Now I've done this over um, 48 months, 4 years, and 
um, with a mileage limit of 10,000 miles a year. As you can see, Voxel are doing um, a deposit contribution at the moment of 1750 um, for put down 2,000 pounds. And that comes out at about 270 pounds a month with a final payment of about 7,000 pounds. There are also um, higher purchase options available and leasing, but uh, we'll stick with the PCPs because that's the most common way that you would finance a car. The APR is about 4.9%. So here is the 1.2 turbo engine. There are um, many cars that share this engine. Um, Vauxhall um, Crossland X, Citroen DS3 Crossback, Peugeot 208, we could go on. Nice and easy to sort of work on, I think, relatively speaking, for a modern engine. Coolant is... It's a, it's a green coolant, interesting. Um, yes, it's 1.2 litre in size. You can also get a 75 horsepower non-turbocharged engine in this um, version of this engine available in the basic Corsair SE. But most people would go up for the SRI like this. If you're coming to this car um, from something like a, a Corsair D or a Corsair E, by that I mean the previous generation car rather than the electric Corsa. You'll notice that this car is very light, all the panels are really light, and I imagine the fuel economy figures are pretty impressive on this too. Um, it's not my favourite colour scheme to have white with this black roof, I think I'd have something a bit more conservative, but that's just me. Um, the car's quite nice to drive, the engine feels very punchy, I did have it on the motorway earlier on and that was all fine. The only thing I would say is the steering is incredibly light and the clutch pedal is a little bit jerky, but it could just be this car or it could be my driving. I don't really know. So thank you ever so much indeed for watching this. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, I will be doing a video on the electric course of the Corsair E um, as well, so I'm about to go and drive that. Um, please don't forget to visit my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting, and also my website www.lloydvehiclesulting.co.uk, particularly if you wish me to source a car for you. I am still going out and doing jobs at the moment, as long as dealerships are open. Obviously, in the current situation we're in, um, the uh, dealerships might be closed or something like that. I don't really know. But at the moment, I am going out. I'm still sourcing cars for clients um, within, you know, very sensible guidelines of course. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching.